Hi everyone, welcome to Precision Rifle Craft and thank you for joining us. I'm really excited about this episode. I think this is going to be really interesting. I've wanted to do this one since I started the channel and I finally found a day we can hike up here, set everything up and uh, make a go of it. Essentially, we've come up here today to talk about what we refer to in precision shooting as cant error. Essentially, cant error is the deviation of your bullet from its intended flight path through canting or failing to level your rifle laterally, side to side. Of course, we're not talking about shooting at angles. We're not talking about shooting downhill or uphill. We're talking about uh, shooting in at any angle and failing to level your rifle side to side or laterally. It's very, very important to do that, and today we're going to find out why. Now, though our particular application today is precision target shooting, this information is even more important to hunters. If you're hunting and you're taking shots on game at distance, you want to be absolutely sure of shot placement, ensuring a humane and ethical kill, and eliminating any unnecessary suffering to the animal. Hunters generally have a problem that target shooters don't have, which is they don't have the luxury of time. A target shooter can generally kind of go through his mental checklist, make sure everything is, uh, uh, you know, to code before he breaks a shot. But hunters are really shooting, um, you know, in a limited window of opportunity. They'll spot their game animal. It'll present itself in a particular way where they can take a shot on uh, the vitals of the animal. And they have to break their shot while the opportunity is still there. Generally, the uh, lateral attitude of their rifle is uh, among the last things on their mind if it's there at all when they break their shot. And for those who are hunting at distances, cant air is a particular problem, and we're going to see why. So here we are, we've returned to our favorite spot, our 440 meter range in the coast mountains of BC, and we've set up a small 6 inch steel plate, which we uh, always keep up here. We stash it behind a boulder so we don't have to carry it up and down every time we hike up and down here. And uh, we've set it up on a rock wall, and we're going to... Uh, begin by taking a shot on that steel plate to verify our uh, elevation and windage adjustments at this range. And then after that, we're gonna introduce a cant to the rifle, left and right, left or right, uh, using a digital level here, which we've brought with us, which is, going to, uh, <laughs> which is going to enable us to dial in a specific degree cant into the rifle. And we're gonna watch through the spotting scope to see how much of a real world difference it makes at this range, I think 440 meters is a good distance for this exercise. We're shooting a 308, which is a, sort of a nominal cartridge for both target shooting and hunting. It's very, very popular. And uh, we have uh, really good environmental conditions today. We're going to find out just how much of a uh, difference canting your rifle makes when breaking a shot with a 308 rifle at 440 meters or 481 yards. Besides being an interesting and fairly novel idea for a video, uh, it should be a fairly easy one for me to make too because essentially I got to connect once and then miss a whole bunch of times and I think I can probably manage that. So of course the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our rifle and dial in a firing solution for this distance. The target is over there on that rock wall. Let me see if I can point to it Ooh, right there. It's 440 meters away as I've mentioned and we're going to uh, dial in our uh, dope, our data on previous engagements uh, for this distance, cartridge, rifle, and environmental conditions. Basically, we're going to dial, let's see here, we're going to give it 2.9 mils up, and we're going to dial one click to the left for spin drift, which is discussed in episode one uh, of Precision Rifle Craft. So basically, that's all there is to it, guys. 2.9 mils up and uh, 0 0.1 mil to the left for this uh range rifle cartridge and environmental conditions and um, and then of course we're going to set our focus adjustment which is sometimes erroneously referred to as parallax adjustment now parallax is a phenomenon it's essentially an error it's not something that you adjust except to the extent that you adjust it out of existence so we're going to dial in 500 yards this is in yards and the you know the graduations on uh, these focus knobs aren't particularly important when you look through your scope what you're looking for is um, what is referred to as parallax error. You're looking for uh, the reticle shifting relative to the point of uh, aim uh, as you move your head or your eye side to side. So that's something we can discuss in a future episode, but basically we've dialed in a firing solution here. And very, very, very importantly, we're going to flip out our bubble level. Now, as it happens, the rifle is already level. I'm not sure if you can see that. Uh, that is just an accident. I haven't leveled it intentionally. And um, yeah, we can talk for a moment about the bubble levels that are available on the market. This particular bubble level that I'm using, this is my sort of preferred bubble level that I have a few of, 
is made by a company called Flatline Ops in the U.S., and this is their AccuLevel. What's kind of interesting about it is that it is hinged. You can basically um, store and carry the rifle with it uh, put away so it's not sticking out of the side of your rifle. And when it's ready to use, you just simply flip it out. And the action on this hinge is very, very positive, very affirmative. It feels really nice. It's very precise and repeatable. And it also has a fine tuning adjustment, uh, both in the open position here and in the closed position here, there's a screw that you can uh, set to level it perfectly in either position. It's quite a novel idea. Uh, the main uh, drawback to the AccuLevel is its exorbitant price. You know, I think this one costs like 280 Canadian dollars with tax and shipping. I mean, that's a lot of money for what's really just uh, a bubble level. It is a critical component on a precision rifle system, uh, but it is a lot of money to spend on a bubble level. So you might consider any number of other alternatives out there. I know Vortex makes a really simple one for, I don't know, I think they're 80 or or $100. That's, uh, you know, very similar to this one in that it is cantilevered, but it's always, it's fixed. It's not, um, it doesn't hinge. It's simply uh, fixed in the outward position. And that works fine, particularly for a, a precision application where you're not slinging the rifle and carrying it on your back like a hunter would. It's probably not going to bother you. The advantage of having a cantilever design like this is that you can clearly see it from uh, the position you're laying behind the rifle in. It's out of the way, and yet it's really visible. Of course, if you're a right-handed shooter, you want it on the left side. And if you're a left-handed shooter, then you want it on the right side. And, uh, and these cantilever designs really work extremely well. There are alternatives. So for example, Night Force makes a really nice one that's integrated into the um, uh, upper half of your rear ring. And uh, that's really nice too. It sits reasonably low. A friend of mine has it. And when I ran that rifle of his, it's a Seiko rifle, I had no difficulty seeing the graduations on the elevation turret over top of that level. That's a very nice design. There are others that um, attach to the rail and they cantilever very, in a very similar fashion, except they cantilever underneath the scope, um, and, uh, and that works fine too. I, I also saw a rail where it has an integral bubble level in the base of the rail, and that might work well too. It's, it's a matter of personal preference. I would encourage you to uh, have a look at what's out there and decide what uh, appeals most to your uh, preferences and budget, but there, is, uh, there are quite a few choices out there. Whichever level you choose, the most critical thing is how it's installed. It is absolutely imperative that you level your scope by the reticle, not by the turret. Now, when I'm installing a scope and a scope level, I do use a little spirit level on the elevation turret, not because I'm, um, not because I'm installing the scope level according to how the elevation turret is sitting, but simply because I want to check the overall assembly of the scope and ensure that the reticle and the turret are relatively uh, close. If they're a little bit off, that's fine. But if they're way off, then I'm going to send the scope back. Uh, but in any case, uh, you know, you really have to use a plumb line or simply take, if you don't have a long sight line in your house like I do or on your property where you can set up a plumb line where the wind isn't going to sway it, you can simply take a grid target to your range, uh, bring, a, uh, you know, bring a carpenter's level, make sure that grid on that target is uh, perfectly level, and then you know, go back to the bench, uh, zoom in on it, and, uh, and you can adjust, you can twist your scope before tightening down your rings and, uh, and do the same, of course, with your bubble level to make sure that everything is level uh, according to the reticle. It is absolutely imperative that we always level our um, scopes and adjust our bubble levels according to the position of the reticle and not the scope tube or the turrets. All right, so let's take that first shot. And before we do, I just want to show you that this uh, bubble level is perfectly centered. We have eliminated any potential cant error from the rifle system and we're ready to take our first shot with the level perfectly centered. All right, so here's where things get interesting. I had a look in the spotting scope at the uh, instant replay and it looks like we did score a pretty clean hit on that steel plate. Look close to center. Uh, we'll see just how clean it was shortly. And uh, now that we've done that, I've installed this little digital level on the elevation turret of the scope and, uh, and you know, tried to zero it. It's reading 0 0.1 degree right now. There it is, 0, 0.0. And uh, that appears to be the margin of error for this thing. I took a couple of tries to get it to zero, but there it is, 0, 0.0. We are level. 
So I'm going to put the camera down for a moment and I'm going to cant the rifle one degree to the left. All right, there we go. I managed to get 1.0 degree. And if you have a look at the bubble level, you can see that it is sitting in the right side of that, um, of, of its window. And uh, about a third of the bubble is over that line on the right. Uh, I guess that indicates one degree, who knew? So now what's happening is the rifle is canted one degree to the left. And theoretically what should happen now is the round should impact low and to the left. That's what we're looking for. That's what Cantera does, is it causes the round to impact uh, to the same side that the rifle is canted and low to that side. So, you know, we're canting one degree, 1.1 degree to the left. You know, we're expecting to see an impact uh, low and to the left of the target. Honestly, guys, I've never done this before. This is my first time seeing this, same as you. And um, who knows, maybe I'll still hit the plate uh, lower left uh, corner. I really don't know, but we're going to find out soon. So here we go. All right, so I had a look at the instant replay and we've clearly hit the plate a second time. Uh, I watched it a few times and I, I, I'm quite confident that our impact is low into the left of our previous impact and low into the left, of course, of my point of aim. So I'm sorry, guys, I'm doing my best here to miss, but unfortunately that time I have connected um, a second time. And uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase the cant error significantly. We're going to cant it to the right this time just to mix it up. And we're gonna go from one degree to three degrees. And I fully expect to miss the steel plate this time. Um, you know, one thing I will say is that with the rifle canted one degree, uh, it's really not visually discernible without the bubble level. I'm kind of, I was kneeling behind my rifle and looking at it and to me it looks level. So, you know, one degree of cant error is not something that you can, um, you know, visually uh, discern behind the rifle, but it does manifest as a shift in your point of impact downrange. And of course, we're only shooting at 481 yards here. So obviously, you know, that uh, deviation will compound significantly uh, at greater distances. If we did the exact same thing at 800 meters, I, I think we absolutely would have missed the steel plate by a significant margin. So, you know, we did unfortunately connect a second time, uh, but this time we're gonna increase the cant air to three degrees to the right, and I fully expect to miss, so let's go back to the rifle. All right, guys, there you have it, 3.0 degrees to the right, and as you can see on the bubble level, it's significantly over the line on the left this time, maybe uh, two thirds or uh, three fifths over the line, and, uh, now what I'm going to do is lock in that bipod to uh, lock in the three degrees and uh, let's take a shot. All right, so we've clearly missed our target. I watched the instant replay and it almost looks like we hit the uh, rebar frame on the right side of the target, um, maybe low and to the right, but certainly to the right. Uh, maybe we'll be able to see that once we go down range and inspect the target, but we've clearly missed uh, We've missed a six inch plate by what looks like a you know a few inches at least uh, from 481 yards or 440 meters with a right uh, three degree cant very important to level those rifles guys One more try. Let's do five degrees and uh, see just how badly this goes so five degrees now let's go back to the left and see what happens uh, when we uh, try to take that shot. All right, here we go, five degrees to the left, very obvious now looking at the rifle from uh, behind the rifle. You can really tell it's, uh, you know, uh, listing way to the left and uh, that turns out to be five degrees. So let's give this a try. So we just hiked down to where our target was. We pulled it down and had a close look at it. And I have to tell you, I'm very pleased with my cold bore shot. Um, you may recall from episode two, I mentioned that my personal standard for long range target shooting is always trying to hit the uh, middle three fifths of my target. Generally, that's a steel plate. And uh, you know, suffice it to say that today we managed to do that with that cold bore shot, the first one without any cant error or zero degree shot that was uh, you know, definitely within the three-fifths. So uh, let's have a look at that plate now. All right, so here she is, my six by six inch steel plate. It's uh, simply uh, welded up on a, um, you know, on a stand of, uh, of rebar. I'm not sure what the diameter is, but it's one of the smaller varieties of rebar. And um, yeah, you know, uh, 
there's our cold bore shot dead center and um, here's our second shot which was um, low and to the left as predicted which was of course our one degree to the left cant error shot so here we have zero cant error shot cold bore shot uh, pretty much dead center and our um, you know second shot with uh, one degree cant um, you know, I thought that maybe that next shot, the uh, three degrees to the right, may have impacted the rebar frame low and to the right. And it certainly does appear to be this right here, but it's not this right here because um, I do recall this being dented already from a previous shooting session at a, you know, significantly greater distance and we did hit the, um, the rebar frame. So if you look closely, you'll see there's some rust there and we clearly did not impact at that time. Um, you know, we impacted in this vicinity and that rock blast looked like we uh, maybe hit the frame. But in any case, this is our first shot, dead center, cold bore shot, one degree to the left cant error. Somewhere over here is three degrees uh, to the right cant error. And then our final shot was five degrees to the left and it blew off a whole bunch of, you know, um, moss on the rock wall uh, low into the left of the steel plate. So, you know, pretty great results here. I think that really shows what cant error is all about and uh, why it needs to be prevented with um, good technique and good equipment. But uh, how about that cold bore shot, eh? That's pretty good. I'm pretty happy about that. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you found that as interesting as I did. You know, before I made this video, I had really no idea what uh, effects specific degree values of cant would have uh, on the flight path of the bullet. So it was really interesting seeing that in action. Um, I certainly learned something. I hope you did too, and I hope you'll join us again next time. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and maybe even sharing with your friends. I appreciate it. Bear appreciates it, and we'll see you again next time.